They call the hoax. I'm Chris Hoke, writer for Cowboy and Lucky for Red Sea. And with me is the masked man. <laughs> Hello, folks. I'm Mark Hoke, uh, movie enthusiast, uh, writer, composer, and currently disgruntled Dallas Cowboys fan. Uh, so that's what the bag was all about. But this is a movie show. That's right. Uh, and so we got a whole show talking about movies. You know, it's, I wonder when the prequels came out, if we could have, should have worn cow bags back then when the Star Wars prequels were out. That's a... That, that, well, would, that would have been the movie. The way to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, <laughs> hey, and by the way, we did we failed to announce last week. We got through with our rapid fire segment finally. Yes. Uh, we should have had like a parade. Yeah. Uh, you know, the elephants and giraffes come through. Yeah. Have the cats come in and do a puppet show in honor of the yeah. rapid fire segment ending. Yeah. That would have been great. <laughs> our rapid fire uh, segments that took what three weeks yeah three, all of three weeks, weeks or yeah. something like that yeah it was it was uh i think next week we'll start our slow-mo yeah. segment see how long we can drag yeah. that out it'll be like five minutes yeah yeah just to, uh, just, to, just, to, just to mess with the people now we're doing the quote of the week now or at the end of the show end of the show end of the show so stay tuned to the end of the show for the quote of the week yes but our first topic of the day is all right Here's the thing. Let me say that just for real briefly. In life, people expect you to like certain things. Those bastards. Like for for instance, with me, my biggest thing has been beer and coffee. Yeah. I'm just supposed to. Hey, you want a beer? Or would you like some coffee? Yeah. I hate beer and I hate coffee. I can't stand the taste of either one of them. And I, you say what you will, but if you like coffee and you like beer, you can have all of mine you want. Because I can't take it. I hate it. Yeah. So, but people expect you to like it. And they'll just offer it. Hell, they won't even ask you. They'll just give it to you. You ain't and like, oh, God, I, do I really have to drink this? Right. And I used to try and play nice and sort of drink it. But now I just, I just tell them. Because I'm getting too old. I'm getting too old. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very crotchety 34-year-old. <laughs> so anyway, having said that, there's, the same is true with movies. There's certain things or certain movies you're just supposed to like because everybody's supposed to like them. So what's huh. a movie, actor, actress, something movie related that you think people are, expect you to like but you don't? Well, without a doubt, certainly a, a, a type of movies that <sighs> since I'm a guy, mm-hmm. you know, I'm expected to like all that frat humor Films, you know, all the Van Wilder stuff, the Stoner movies, the Stoner movies, just on yeah. and on and on. And uh, I mean, going back as far as like Animal House, which yeah. I don't even know if I'd call it a mediocre film. Really, I, I, I don't even know if it's that good. Yeah, I, for I, me, I've never even watched Animal House. I can't. I I, I hate that genre so much myself. Mm. I, I've never watched it. I've tried others, but go ahead, keep going. Well, and, and there's that one, and then all, these are kind of like the the I guess the hallowed. Yeah. films of the frat stoner yeah. uh, uh, genre and you know Caddyshack is another yeah if you have well, a penis you're supposed to just automatically <laughs> you love Caddyshack yeah yeah I, I think I got maybe 20 minutes in the Caddyshack and I couldn't take it no more honestly other than Rodney Dangerfield in that movie he yeah. steals every scene he's in yeah other than him and then there's the scene with the old guy trying to have the perfect golf game yeah other than that little subplot if you will yeah I, everything else is disposable, in my opinion. Yeah, the, 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 that I, I would agree with you that you're supposed to like the frat movies and the stoner movies. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think I got maybe 15 minutes in the Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. I just couldn't take mm-hmm. anymore. I turned it off. Right. And uh, I mean, that's not to say there's a few of those in that vein I like. Mm-hmm. Uh, Porky's, if you want to throw in that vein, I, I liked Porky's the first one. Yeah, the first one was okay. I never saw the others, but the first one I thought was funny, and, and yeah, uh, it had its moments. You know, and and then if you throw old school in that vein, I liked old school, but yeah, but yeah. like the the biggies, the Animal House, the Caddyshack, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know. All those types, I just, I can't sure. take them. I Anything can't with like them. the National Lampoons. Now the first Vacation, that was and the Christmas one. <laughs> and the Christmas one, those are good. Yeah. Uh, but I would dare say ninety what ninety nine percent of the stuff that National Lampoon mm-hmm. has done is is forgettable. 
And the thing is, is people will say, well, y'all are just highbrow. You like artsy fartsy stuff. No, trust me. If there's anybody not highbrow, it's us two. I, I gave Dodgeball four stars. Yes. You can't, can't, okay. <laughs> exactly. I Give mean, me a break. Uh, you know, so we're not coming from, from an artsy fartsy type perspective. I love popcorn movies and trashy movies. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've watched, oh my God, I didn't want to admit to some of the stuff I've watched and liked. But. I just don't like the. Uh, I just don't like the. Uh, well, yeah. segment number two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might be on the. Uh, whenever we go subscription based, you have to pay for it. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry about that. Oh, cool clips. All yeah, right, exactly. But uh, you know, I, I, I I'm with you. I, I totally agree with you. I don't like the stoner and the frat house movies. I just I don't like them. There's yeah. a few, like I said, right. You know that I think we're we're funny, but uh, on the whole. The, so, I would agree with you. I guess yeah. the one I would throw out there, the one thing I'm supposed to like that I just don't... I, mean, I take it back. I like it, but I don't see what the big deal is. And I'll, there's two of them, and they've been in the past decade. The Harry Potter franchise okay. and the Lord of the Rings franchise. Okay. I'm just supposed to just love those movies. Mm. And to be honest with you, they're okay, but I don't get the whole hoopla... More, more so the Harry Potter ones. I, I, the Harry Potters. As soon as I'm done watching them, mm -hmm. it's I, I totally forget about it. It's gone, and I don't. It, nothing stuck in my head. It's just they don't resonate with me in what's any way, shape, or form. As soon as it goes in, and it goes right back out. So much so, I haven't even watched the last two or three. I haven't, wow. I, I haven't I quit watched them wow because the, the the last one starts yeah I, a month. I, I'm behind I haven't seen any of the last two or three I can't remember wow. the last one I saw I think the last one I saw was is that the one where like it went back in time and they repeated oh god that's what the was third that one? one yeah that's the last one I saw holy crap what's that one called uh, the the prisoner of Azkaban that's the last one I saw yeah I, I I don't I just checked out on them because I just I don't I, they I they do not appeal to me. Right. The Harry Potter movies do not appeal to me. And the Lord of the Rings movies I like the Lord of the Rings movies. Don't get me wrong. I've got the big collectors the edition extended edition things. Yeah. But Oscar best picture and all these Oscars and stuff I don't get it. And all these best top ten lists and stuff. Yeah. I don't see it. I don't see what yeah. everybody else is saying. And that's not news to you. Me and you've had this debate before, but yeah. being a film buff, oh, you love the Lord of the Rings movie. It's like, well, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> I don't know why I'm supposed to be <laughs> defaulted to loving it. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I just don't, I, I don't get the appeal of those movies. Yeah, not to that scale, at least. I, and I just find that fascinating because you know, that is a series where I know you're not big on the fantasy genre, uh -huh. so I get that. Yeah, but. Lord of the Rings in particular, not so much Harry Potter, but the uh, Lord of the Rings is such a cinematic triumph on so many levels, and um, um, I, I think it's I think it's what I think number two or three on my top one hundred. But see, that's uh, just that you said it was a cinematic triumph on so many levels, right? And you, and you, and you totally don't feel that way. I mean, so. the special effects are good. And their special effects are massive. Mm -hmm. And I realize logistically to shoot three big movies like that, the way they did, is very impressive. Mm -hmm. Right. Other than that, I don't see the justification for cinematic triumph. I really? Mean, no. I mean, it's just it's just a fantasy movie. And they go pretty much by the numbers hmm. with the story. I mean... Well, I think, I think uh, for one thing, I would... And, it, and it's to defend it a little bit to say... The scope of it and the detail, you know, it, it really is the epic by which all epics will have to be judged upon from 2001 mm. to present and and in the future, at least for mm. the near future, anyways, till something comes along that's just so much better. Uh, but now you look at Avatar, for example. Yes, it made like a two trillion dollars yeah. or whatever, but no one's sitting there going, "Well, it's the new that next epic that every, everyone's going to judge about." Why? Because it's so poorly written. Let's just be honest. Yeah. The story is poor. Yeah. Now, Lord of the Rings, I feel that, yes, you can say the scripts are strong and that you can, and yeah. what they're doing with the special effects, yeah. uh, having a strong cast, uh, you, know, you got the art direction. I mean, really, the, 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 the score is phenomenal. There's so many things to love mm -hmm. about that. Well, I, 
there's all there's lots of good elements in it. Uh, definitely, like I said, from production value, it's top mm-hmm. notch. Special effects are great. Cast of thousands in these battle scenes, or at least a computer like cast of thousands, because I think they CGI had all those armies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, definitely, I mean, they're well written, they're well acted, and they're, I'm not saying anything about them is poor. Right. I'm not. I'm I not denigrating any of them. You mm-hmm. know, I'm just saying. I don't see what puts them at this higher plane. Mm. Sorry, computer just beeped at us. <laughs> Distracted. Me. I, don't, I don't see what puts them at a higher plane. I mean, everything in them is, is well done. Yeah. All right? But there's big, huge, massive scenes in Spartacus and mm-hmm. Ben-Hur and all these other epic-type movies. But I think that, 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 just, that just is something, a light bulb moment. I don't like big epic movies like that. And I never had. That's probably the why. That's probably because, where it was separating me and you there. Yeah. That I tend to... I, I like the big scope. Like Ten Commandments, Ben-Hur. Sure, I love that stuff. I, I, I th- Those are all throwaway to me. Mm. They're totally dismissive. Ben-Hur's like in my top ten. I yeah, love Ben-Hur. Yeah, see, I, in those movies, you, I, you watch them once and yeah. I, you just punt them. I mean, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm being, I'm being facetious, but... <laughs> what? No, I'm not going to be... Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm just being, you know, silly, but... I, they do not resonate with me, mm. you know? Give me give me uh, the smaller movie that really gets into some real deep human emotions and explores the human, you know, psyche... I'll take that kind of movie any day over armies yeah. of thousands. You yeah. Know? Well, let's let's get an example. Give, give, well, give it like De Niro and Taxi Driver. It's just a story about one guy mm. roaming the streets in his taxi cab. Oh, I'll watch that movie a hundred times before I'll watch Lord of the Rings. And I I I, I, I think Taxi Driver is is a million times the the movie Ben Hur or Lord of the Rings is. And wow. it's just a story of a guy. In a taxi cab, and his obsession and guilt and yeah. anger and obsession, and I love that movie. Mm. You know, I can't get enough of that movie. Well, that's just that's fascinating because <laughs> I feel like that's a four star classic. It's brilliant. Yeah, but I like Ben Hur. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is, folks. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody, to the Incredible Hoax. Uh, we actually have a new. Movie review. Yep. Uh, this uh, past weekend, Red came out. Uh, right. Stars uh, Bruce Willis, uh, among other stars. Uh, you got Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren. Morgan, Morgan Freeman, Freeman. John Malkovich. John Malkovich. Mary, what's her name? Mary Louise Parker. Yeah, right. Um, your she, thoughts? She disappeared. You know, she was an actress that came out. I didn't think a whole lot of her. And she sort of disappeared and then... I've never mm-hmm. seen Weeds, but it put her on the map. I think she's won some Emmys, and mm-hmm. you know, good. I mean, I, 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 you know, here's the thing about her is I don't. There's actors out there that don't get successful, or I don't think much of. It's not like I, I want them to not succeed. It's just that you know, show me something. And she was something early on in her career that didn't really show a lot, but now mm-hmm. she's come back with a vengeance. So, so that's that's good. To, that's good to see. I mean, I, that's well, good, I, I think that I, I like I like that you started there because that's. Yeah. Uh, I thought so much of her performance in this film. Yeah, uh, I think she um, is very good. I'd I'd even say I think that I'd hope that she'd be in consideration for an Oscar nomination because I think she's that good. Oh. Um, but also her career, she did a lot of independent like films yeah. in like the mid '90s. But she really seems to have really found. Uh, Found her footing uh, of, of yeah. the past decade, so great for her. Yeah, um, I, 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 I haven't seen Weeds. I don't know what kind of character she plays at all, but in this one, she was sort of the uh, adorable, sort of, uh, I don't know, looking for love but never finding it, sort of the rom- hopeless romantic Hopeless type, romantic type. type and uh, she did a good job. I would go so far as a Oscar yeah. worthy, but I mean, but I, I've had similar. Impressions about actors in a movie that you wouldn't think would be an Oscar caliber, but they're like, oh my god, that person was really good. So right. I've been there. Yeah, I wasn't there on this one, but I've been there. But overall, it was a good movie. Mm. Um, the actor I, that really I appreciated the most was John Malkovich. I mean, he was <laughs> he was he he, right. he he plays a good crazy guy. John Malkovich does well, and I would say that he is one of those solid actors like Stanley Tucci. Yeah, it's a, you know, lifelong character actor, and yeah. he is always solid. 
Yeah, he's never bad. Yeah, he's yeah he. he Even if the movie is, he I don't think either of those two actors I've mentioned there. Yeah, Malkovich is one of them. I don't don't think they've given a bad performance. Yeah. Even Jonah Hex, Malkovich does his job. (laughs) Even though Jonah Hex sucked all the hell. (laughs) Yeah. He he did his job. That was a a pretty terrible movie. Yeah. But, I mean, he, he. yeah, he put his best foot forward. What else can he? Uh, yeah, he does for? his job. That's all you can ask of him. Uh, so, gosh, anyway. but, but the movie itself is a is a is a good mix of comedy and action. Yeah, and uh, it seems like this is the movie Bruce Willis uh-huh. has been hoping to find for the last I don't know twelve years. Yeah, he did that film with Barry Levinson, uh, director Barry Levinson, that Bandits movie. That yeah, was not a good movie. And it was not good. It just seemed to, like the comedy was all uneven and it was just off. Yeah, well, there was that movie was wrong on basic principle mm. i mean the ba- it had no central villain you know who was the villain in that movie you don't you can't answer that question you know you really can't so right off the bat it's screwed yeah. and then your two main characters are vying for the same woman and they carry them out throughout the movie right you can't who do you root for you're left with nothing because Billy Bob Thornton was a good guy in the movie. Bruce Willis' character was a good guy in the movie. He was a good guy. You were torn who she should be with. And the, the film makers say, well, that's kind of the point of the movie. Well, then then you need to go back to the drawing board. Because you can't put your audience in that position. So that movie was screwed on principle. Bandits was. Right. Well, it was one of those offbeat films that just didn't come together. Yeah. But I can say Red is offbeat, but it does come together. Yeah. And you hear that noise? Remember the other episode where my wife rudely interrupts the show? No. With arrogance coming in from Hard Day's Work? No, not two shows in a row. Two shows in a row. That arrogantly. could not happen. Arrogantly coming into her own home during the middle of the show. Oh, are you sure it's not the uh, the ghosts? <laughs> well, the cats are locked out of the room, so they're not here to tell us. It could be a ghost. Well, see, that's the thing. That might be those. They would have been here to warn us. Yeah. But oh, back to Red though. Yeah, I mean, back to Red. But it was it was a good movie. Um, um, you know, if if you're a fan of uh, uh, of eighties movies, it was kind of the eighties movie vein. You know, well, I felt. Yeah. I felt. You know, the action was was good and at times a little co- uh, comic booky. Uh, but all in all, not too wild and. It was. I don't know, it was just kind of cool to see all those actors in the same movie. Like, yeah. It was almost like a novelty movie. Well, I would divide, but not the, in a bad way. I would divide it, divide the audience in half this way. If you go into the movie and then you're watching a movie like this, and your attitude is going to be, well, that w- that wouldn't really happen that way. This is not your movie. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you're going to be that analytical and serious, yeah. you know, this is an escapism at its yeah at its finest. Just to sit yeah. back, enjoy the show right. for what it is. And, uh, and it is fun. Well, here's the thing I had. Here's the reaction I had to the movie. Uh, Bruce Willis, Helen Mirren, Morgan Freeman, John Malkovich, uh, Brian Cox, um, and uh, Ernest Borgnine. That's kind of all the old guys that are in the movie. Sure, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. So all of them solid actors with great careers behind them. Morgan Freeman is probably the one who's still kind of the hottest, if you will, because right. he still gets nominated for Oscars all the time and everything sure. else. And, but anyway, my my question is, it took this sort of a novelty movie to get all those people together. My question is, why were they gone in the first place? Because they're still good actors. And still very viable. Mm. You know, Bruce Willis should be making... Uh, you know, he's as good as he's ever been. Right. You know, I know box office viability goes up and down, mm-hmm. and he's been on a down spot, but... He should still be. He sh- this should not have been a movie where it's like, oh, good to see Bruce Willis mm-hmm. back in his thing again. Yeah. He should never have left it, you know. And right. Helen Mirren, she's done movies like this before in her career. She's done the arty stuff, mm-hmm. but she's done the commercial movies before. Sure, sure. You know why? You know it's kind of like it's cool to see in the movie, but why did it take a novelty picture to get them together? You know, does that make any sense? Well, it, do, it does. There's, you know, because I think in the in the showbiz, things kind of follow trends. Yeah. And and I think sometimes the trends leave you. <clears throat> yeah. You know, and I think that's that's <laughs> <laughs> that's the case. You know, right. whether Bruce, whether it's fair to Bruce Willis or not, he's he's the diehard guy. You know. Yeah. Or he's the early '90s '80s action guy. Right. And I'm like, well, did you not see Sixth Sense? Yeah, I mean, come on! I mean, the guy can he can do the dramatic stuff as well. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, I, I, 
it, 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 things kind of ebb and flow that way. Yeah. I, I get that. Yeah. But it does, the question I think is great though. It's like, why is it so easy for us to forget these yeah, exactly. These great talents. They should never have went anywhere in the first place. Right. They should have always been around. I mean, like, John Malkovich... You know, Billy Bob Thornton, for instance, is one of my favorite actors. He is great. And I love Billy He's Bob one of the Thornton. best. And right now, he works pretty steadily. In, in, in at least one movie a year, if not two. Yes. Whether he's the lead or a major supporting or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he, he's and it's been that way with him for ten years or so. Yeah, yeah. Or, and, and Since it, The Simple Plan, he's just been... Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So, uh, but Malkovich kind of, he'll go away, you not really see him in anything for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And then he'll come back and he'll, he's had two movies this year and then he'll go away for another three years. And yeah. It's like, maybe it's his own personal choice. And if it is, then that's what it is. But I wish Hollywood, if it, if it is a studio decision, mm-hmm. I wish they would do a better job of taking care of some of these really good actors that deserve better. Because Malkovich, he should easily be in two movies a year if that's what he wants to do. Right. You know, Helen Mirren should be in a movie a year if that's what she wants to do. Whether it be a commercial movie or an arty movie. It's just a shame to see quality actors have to wait so long and for Mm -hmm. these novelty pictures to to get another shot. That's... Well, and you hate to see... Like, I mean, I'm thinking of Helen Mirren, but, you know, Judi Dench... Uh, is such a great talent, yeah. and it seems like unless there's a James Bond movie where the, the, she can do the mm-hmm. the Q role or M, excuse me, the M, yeah, it, it, it's like uh, what's up with that? I mean, we shouldn't have to wait just for yeah. a Bond movie to see a talent like that. And Alan Muir and I would also put in that same role. Why? Yeah. Why do we have to? You know, what is the deal with that? Mm-hmm. I don't know if some of these actors price themselves out of projects. That's a factor. That may be a factor. You know. But you know, you know, there, there's certain, there's different tiers of actors. You know, if you don't have a whole lot of money to make your movie, and you can get, you know, somebody on the the, the C list, if you will, mm-hmm. to star in it, and that's all you can get, then you're going to get them, right. so you can at least have somebody to market your movie, like all these directed video type movies or whatnot. And that's the reason you get a Seagal in the movie, even though Seagal has got no. <laughs> Even though Steven Seagal is like lost all his popularity and everything by now, but in the states, in the I, states, yeah, the, the, it's still viable. He's still viable on some level, so right. some people come out there and get him or whatnot. Sure. So I mean, I, so you're right. I mean, the, the, the people do price themselves out of projects and they, they, to their own detriment, start knocking themselves <laughs> down the tier. Yeah, uh, Seagal was more to it than that. That was just an example I pulled, but hmm. you know. I, I, don't know, I wish Hollywood did a better job of, of taking care of, uh, of of the really top notch actors. Sure, and they they, they go they follow trends, but that's Hollywood. So yeah, no, I agree. Uh, but getting back to Red, though, I would say um, you know you're looking for a fun popcorn movie. Uh, this will not disappoint. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. my I would give it three stars. Oh, stars! Yeah, uh, stars. yeah three. You know, no more. Um, no more than three, but three. That's, you know. Yeah. A firm three. Not great, but but good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. But it sounds great. <laughs> we even talked about how we liked it, and then we go no, to the end. Like we're just going to piss off. Then we just pissed on it. <laughs> no, I liked it. I mean, I liked it. It's a fun uh, movie. It's not one I'm like, you know, at the end of the year, I'm like, oh, God, yeah. this is my top ten or anything, but it's a good movie. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it is good. It just keeps getting worse. So I know. Like, it just sounds like, I know, it sounds, it's like, it, it's like if something's good, that's like, that's not good enough. Sorry, for Well, that. you know, that's a good topic right there. I mean, I, I like the great movies. And I like to, you know, I'm always trying to, I want to watch the next. That's the reason why, you'll know, be honest with you, that's the reason why a lot of movies I'll skip and not see them. Because mm-hmm. I, know, I know right off the bat it's not going to be a great movie. Yeah, you know the chances of them being a surprise great film are yes. very low. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And, um, you know, I do that with movies all the time. And I would love each week if we, when we do a review and that everything would be like Social Network where we're given four stars. Yeah. The reality is we're going to review films and we're going to come in here one day and like, hey, one star. Yeah. Do not waste your time. It's going to happen. But luckily we can say, hey, this recent film, it's, yeah. it is good for you uh, movie lovers out there. You know, like we, we watched recently at home uh, the new Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Hmm. And I knew going in it was going to be terrible. And sure enough, it was terrible. 
And, you know, if it wasn't for my wife being a horror fan and wanting to see it, I would have put that movie off for ever. Because <laughs> I knew right off the bat that's the way it'd be. And sure enough, that's what it'd be. So I, I am I am always looking for greatness. In, in Same a, here. In a movie. And uh, Red is not great, but, but it's a good movie. Well, remember, that was part of our, our contention. We were talking about Spielberg a few shows back. Yeah, yeah, one of yeah. The, one of our things we're expressing is, no, not that we don't like Spielberg, we, we we rather like him a lot. Yeah. We just want the guy, we expect a lot of out of him. We expect greatness. Yeah. So with my wife walking in during the segment and the phone ringing at the end, we'll be right back. We'll be Welcome back to the Incredible Hoax. Dun, dun, dun. If you can only see the behind the scenes. We're in my house and there's cats everywhere, kids calling because they got to get picked up, wives rudely walking into their own homes after a hard day at work. It's just a madhouse when we're trying to do our damn television greatness yeah. show. And you're building the addition to your home on an Indian burial ground, so exactly. there's no telling what's going to happen next. Yeah, it's just going to get worse with yeah. all the... Yeah, we might get sucked into TVs. My wife's looking at me with a scornful eye right now, so I'm, I'm not flipping her off off screen. I, I promise you I'm not flipping her off. That is one thing we're <laughs> not doing on this she definitely is flipping me off, though, <clears throat> off camera. She's let us know we're number one. We are number one. Yeah. She does it in a peculiar fashion, but we are number one. All right. Quote, are we doing video of the week? We're going to do video of the pick of the week. Uh, home video... Pick them, rock them, sock yeah, movie rental <laughs> suggestion of the week. Ba 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 ba. I'd like to uh, offer uh, for those that have not seen it, check out Tucker: The Man Is Dream uh, from 1988. Stars Jeff Bridges. You know, since Crazy Heart winning the Oscar for Best Actor, yeah. and he's got Tron Legacy coming up. And True Grit. And True Grit Which looks fantastic, by the way. Uh, as much so. as I, much as we scorn remakes here. Well, that does look like a really good remake. But it's, it's a Coen Brothers directing, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's going to be it's in capable hands at least. It'll be interesting if nothing yeah. else. But for you, Jeff Bridges people that you know want to check out his stuff, yeah. check out Tucker Man is Dream. Tucker Man, and my video pick of the week is it was uh, something recent and it made a lot of money. But if you missed it, How to Train Your Dragon, How to Train a Dragon, How to Train Your Dragon, How to Train a Dragon, How to Train a Dragon, Okay, How to Train a Dragon. The reason why it was a great movie, we we caught it at the at the theaters, and I loved it. It was one of my picks for. Uh, it's going to be on my top ten list for the year. Uh, it's made by the same guy who made Lilo and Stitch, which is my favorite animated movie ever. Uh, Chris Sanders mm. is his name, and uh, I don't know what that guy does, but he, I just dig his uh, his movies, man. So Lilo and Stitch is my favorite animated movie ever, and this one is is really really good too. Mm. So check out How to Train a Dragon. How to Train Your Dragon, I've been told by our, our lovely train, assistant. How to Train Your Dragon. Yes. Well, we're in both. We're in both. They're, they're both good. I hear. But no, it's a great movie. It made a ton of money, and I know it's really mainstream. <clears throat> and uh, we'll do some more obscure picks, or I'll do some more obscure picks next time. But okay. I, I just got, I, that's, that, was, that was my favorite movie of the year up until Social Network. So I think a lot of that movie. Awesome. Uh, now time for the quote of the week. You've waited patiently. Last week's was... Honey, I never drive faster than I can see. Besides that, it's all in the reflexes. So you folks out there that uh, if you put in your guesses and said Big Trouble Little China, you are correct. That's right. For all of you that did not get it, for shame. You have been publicly scorned. Yes. And ridiculed. And the, the, the pun I wanted to make was, and I, kept, I had to bite my tongue and not make it, was if you don't get this quote, you're in big trouble. But... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I knew that'd be a dead giveaway. I had to bring so. the two cats to pin him down, you know. <laughs> Don't it was an awful it. pun, but it was funny. I thought in the moment, so. But, but uh, I resisted. He resisted. Now this week's is a little harder, uh, but you movie buffs, you'll catch it. Um, it is. That's who you were. You do not know who you are. What you've become since the incident. One more time. That's who you were. You do not know who you are. What you've become since the incident. Yeah. And for all those of you that want to go online and guess, you can go to... Go to the Incredible Hoax Facebook page. We have our own Facebook page. Woo and we love and cherish every one of our fans. Pass the word. But you can guess on the wall, right on the wall. And uh, the first one to guess there, we'll send them a Red Sea wristband. 
which I don't have one handy to show you or else I would. <laughs> or you can email us at oak at redseatelevision.com. That's oak at redseatelevision.com. Cool. Take us home, Johnny. Oh. <laughs> well, with that, I bid y'all all next week. It's you. <laughs> you just had to get that in. Oh, yeah.